What's up everybody, it's Mark again and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. Um, a couple weeks ago I posted a video um, of a oven roast deer leg and a lot of people wanted me to share the recipe. So instead of just writing it down, which is a little complicated, I figured I'd show you guys. So today we're going to go through the entire process of roasting an entire hind quarter of a deer. You can do this with hog or really any big cut of meat that still has a bone in it. It's going to work great. That is a big deer. And he didn't even go 30 yards. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was the first buck I've ever shot. Woo! What a rush. Money. That deer is dead. Tagged out, baby. You shot one? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I saw him go what? down. So the plan for today is I'm in my new kitchen. For those of you who haven't been following along on the gram, um, me and Patricia recently bought a house. This is my brand new kitchen. So hopefully you guys will be seeing some more of these cooking episodes since we finally have a kitchen that we can do it in. But anyway, it is the 4th of July today. Uh, so you guys won't be seeing this until after the 4th of July. So I hope you guys had an awesome 4th of July. But for today, our plan is I'm gonna prep this deer leg and then I'm gonna head over to Danny's house we're gonna have a little pool party. We're gonna roast up um, a deer leg and then we're gonna have uh, oven roast potatoes and some crispy Brussels sprouts. These things together make an awesome meal and it's all done in the oven. So it's, it's really, it's kind of easy and it doesn't make a huge mess. So that's why I like it. So let's dive right in. And before we get too hot and heavy into this video, I just wanna remind you guys, we've got a couple events coming up. There's going to be an event. It's going to be our scouting workshop. We do this every year with Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. It's an awesome event. Um, if you go down to the link in the description, it takes you to our Facebook page. Go to the events and you'll be able to find all the details there. But basically what we do is we get a bunch of experienced hunters to take groups of you guys into the woods to show what they are looking for when they're scouting. When they find sign, they're going to show you how to tell if it's fresh, how if it's old, you know, what to do when you see the sign, what it means to them. And there's a whole bunch of different hunters that can show you this. So even if you came last year, go with a different group this time, you'll learn a new perspective. Um, it's always been a really successful event. And then after we come out of the woods, we uh, are going to meet up back at Riverbend Park in Jupiter. And we're going to have a big lunch. We're making a bunch of uh, wild game tacos and all kinds of delicious stuff. So make sure you don't miss it. And please RSVP for both parts of it separately so we know how much food to have and also how many uh, team leaders we should have. Um, you'll find links to RSVP for both down at that, uh, that event page on Facebook. And the other event that I need you guys to know about is our uh, our Saddle Hunter 3D Archery Tournament and Workshop. Uh, so you guys can come for the workshop part of it. You can try out all the different gear that we have. We literally have gear from every saddle hunting company that exists basically, um, including some new gear that hasn't even been released yet. Um, and then there's also gonna be a tournament going on uh, which is shot from a saddle. So it's a 3D tournament that you shoot out of a saddle. It's a lot of fun. The shots are like, there might be one or two in there that are over 30, but most of them are gonna be, you know, within that hunting range. The idea of this event is to simulate an actual saddle hunt so that you guys get to practice, um, you know, shooting in weird positions. You know, those kinds of shots you can take out of a saddle, but not out of a tree stand. Um, so try not to get too hung up on the tournament word. Um, it's really not that competitive, but you can win some stuff. Uh, but it's really just great practice for you to get out there and try some of these different positions. Um, that's going to be on July 22nd. And I forgot to mention, yes, July 22nd. So hopefully we'll see you guys at one or both of those events. And now without further ado, let's cook up a deer leg. <clears throat> All right, so first things first, I took this deer leg, or I guess Danny took this deer leg out of the freezer like three days ago. 
And this is to make sure that it is fully thawed out. So it should be at refrigerator temperature right now, but that's not warm enough. We want this thing at room temperature before it goes in the oven. So I'm not gonna be putting this thing into the oven uh, for another uh, probably two and a half hours. And that's gonna give it plenty of time to come to room temperature. Uh, but in the meantime, we're gonna start preparing it to go in the oven. If for some reason you decide that you wanna try and put this thing into the oven before it has come to room temperature, the result you're gonna get is a charred outside and the inside's gonna be like still alive and walking around. Um, or it'll be incredibly rare and charred on the outside. And that's not really the result that we're going for. We want it to sort of evenly shift towards a medium rare on the inside and um, well, a medium on the inside. And then the outside, we're gonna have a nice crisp on it. All right, so whenever I do one of these roasts, uh, I try to keep all these membranes uh, on the meat. I leave them on when they go in the freezer. Um, I prefer to cut those off before I cook the meat because otherwise I find that the meat, like the exterior of the meat, gets kind of this like unhappy gray look to it just because it gets oxidized uh, by being in contact with the air. If you leave those membranes and that silver skin on there until this point, when you slice all of that off, it's gonna have a really beautiful like red color. So that's what we're gonna do first. Um, and I don't have a, a cutting board big enough to fit this thing. So usually what I do is I make sure that I have cleaned the surfaces thoroughly. Um, and then I just like lay two of these down. And the reason I say clean the surfaces thoroughly is because there's a good chance that this thing's gonna like slide off and land on the countertop. So I like to make sure that this is nice and clean. So, uh, and also make sure you clean it afterwards because otherwise your wife's gonna be pissed. All right, so for this task, I like to use a nice short little knife. It gives me a little bit more control, probably because I use them so much when skinning deer. You're just really comfortable with using a knife of this size. Um, you might like to use something bigger, but this is what I like. Make sure it's good and sharp. It's gonna make it a lot easier to make nice clean cuts. All right, so as I mentioned, we got all these membranes on here and we wanna remove them. So you're just gonna like start just cutting away all these membranes. Um, and this is, this is a slightly tedious process, uh, but it's worth doing and it's gonna end up, like I said, it's gonna expose that meat. You're gonna have a really nice red color and um, you'll be happy you took the time to do this right. But you guys know him. <laughs> um, That's quite the hand. Yeah. Is that a Florida buck? Yeah, I think uh, it's a really cool guy. I shot it with his muzzle loader last year. Cool. You can watch that video right over here. <laughs> is it over there? <laughs> Somewhere up there. <laughs> One thing you'll notice is as I'm cutting away this membrane that the surface isn't perfectly smooth. And that's not a problem. Um, it's actually going to end up making more crispy bits when you have more surface area like that. And also at a certain point, this is going to have some bacon draped over it to stop it from getting dry. So you won't be able to see that anyway. We're going to separate the shank from the main piece of meat. All this meat right here, this is what we want. This is a really big chunk, but all this down here, there's a lot of tendons involved and the shank is not good in the oven. Uh, you want to, if you want to cook the shank, which I absolutely advise you to do, you want to really slow cook that. And so we're going to separate that from uh, the rest of the meat here. So you can see this big tendon right here. I think this is like the Achilles tendon or something similar. Um, you're going to slice right down the bottom here and you'll see there's like 
this group of muscles on the shank um, and that's what we want to separate. So just follow the seam and just keep cutting all those tendons, separating that meat out. And then right here on the back side, if you kind of move the joint, you can see where it articulates. Um, and once you see how the joint moves, you can just go in right above it with your knife and cut through some of those major tendons. And this is kind of tedious, but you can just slowly work through this joint and separate it completely with just a knife. If you're feeling kind of lazy, you could get a saw and do it that way, but you really don't have to. It also really helps to cut away. There's like, I don't know if it's actually a kneecap, but something like a kneecap right here. If you start cutting away on that, then that really exposes that joint. Cut that little bone out. Now you can really see, let's see if I rotate this. You can really see that joint in there. And just start working your way around it to separate it. we have the shanks. So as I was saying, if you get two of these shanks, either from the front or the hind legs, uh, look up a recipe for Osabuco stew and use these in a slow cooker to make it. Um, all of that tendon material sort of breaks down when you slow cook it. And this becomes an absolutely delicious piece um, just because it has all of that, that tendon material in there. It's gonna have a ton of um, uh, collagen, so it's a really healthy piece of meat, uh, but also because of the bones in there, that marrow is going to give it a ton of flavor. So I'm just going to cut away some of this membrane here so I can put this in my freezer because I will definitely be making some stew when we get to the colder months of the year. All right, so now we're on to the other side of the hind quarter, and we're still removing membrane. So just keep on cutting. I would say that's pretty good. The end result that you want is a big hunk of meat that is mostly without membranes on the outside. So you have exposed meat and that's gonna allow it to absorb all the flavors that you're gonna put into it. Next, we're gonna salt it. And you wanna make sure that you salt it early and salt it often. Little bits of salt over time are going to make it taste more like itself. Whereas if you add a whole bunch of salt at the end, it's just going to make it taste like salt. So I'm using coarse sea salt. Uh, you can use whatever salt you want, but I just really like this. Himalayan pink salt's nice too. So you want to kind of press that salt in there and really get into like the folds and stuff. Um, get into the creases and let that salt really work its way in. Remember, you're working with a huge piece of meat, so you gotta give it time for that salt to sort of penetrate into the center. All right, so while this is resting, the salt is doing its work. In fact, I'll zoom in in a second. You can see wherever there's a little kernel of salt, there's a little bit of moisture pooling up around it. So it's starting to draw out some of that moisture um, and that salt is going to dissolve and eventually work its way back in there. Um, but now while we let it rest and get to room temperature, we're going to start inserting, uh, garlic. So I've got all these cloves of garlic already peeled and ready to chop up. So we're going to chop them up. Um, but we're going to chop them, uh, in long slivers. We'll just cut off all the little butts here. We don't need those pieces in there.
All right, so for this part, this long, skinny, small knife is gonna come in handy. What you're gonna do is you're gonna make little stab wounds all over this piece of meat. And you wanna go in about, I don't know, an inch and a half to two inches. Um, and you wanna do them every couple of inches, every two inches or so. We're gonna make little stab wounds. So once you've got all these little stab holes, you're gonna take these slivers of garlic and stick them in the side. Just push them as far in as you can get them to go. Now the amount of these that you do is gonna depend on how much you like garlic. I really like garlic, so I'm doing a lot of them. And I feel it just gives a lot of flavor to the meat. And also the moisture from that garlic uh, keeps the, the meat nice and moist as it cooks in the oven. Now we have garlic stuffed inside of all of the little crevices. And now we can just let the meat rest and get to room temperature and it'll be ready to go in the oven. Guys, we are at Danny's place and we have his lovely in-laws. She's one of our biggest fans. All right, so what we're gonna do now is get this ready to go into the oven. Things are getting crazy outside. Dogs are fighting. It's a true party now. So as I mentioned before, this is now at room temperature. Um, and so we're gonna cover it in, in oil, add a little bit more salt, and then we're gonna get in the oven. So the first thing we wanna do is turn up the oven to the maximum heat. It's either gonna be 450 or 500. And this oven has a convect feature. So that just makes things go a little faster, but, uh, if you don't have that, it's not a big deal. All right, we're at 500, so it's gonna start heating up and I'm gonna start putting oil all over this beast. All right, so we're using grapeseed oil, just for something a little different. Before I get crazy with that, we gotta pat this thing dry. So because I put salt on earlier, a lot of the moisture started to pull out and we wanna make sure we don't have any moisture on it because when you put it in the oven, moist, it's basically just going to steam the meat all that. We want to get a nice sear, a nice crisp on the outside. We're gonna pick up all of that moisture. And I'm gonna do something a little different this time around. I'm gonna do it on this new dish that I got, which allows air to go underneath it. And I'm hoping that's gonna get it crispy on all sides instead of just the top. So as I mentioned before, salt it early and often. So we're gonna sprinkle a little more salt on it. And now we're gonna coat it with a little light coating of oil. We're just gonna rub it in with our hands. Make sure you get up in the folds, a little bit of oil in there. It's gonna stop it from getting dry when you're cooking in the oven. Just like that. All right, the oven is almost at the right temperature. We're just gonna take a little bit of red wine and pour it in the bottom of this tray. Just a tiny little bit. We don't want, we don't want to drown it. We just want to have a little bit of a covering so that when this thing starts cooking, and it's going to cook pretty hard, we just want to make sure that it's not creating a ton of smoke. But if you put too much, then you're basically just going to steam the meat. You don't want that either. All right, guys, the oven is hot. It's time to put this thing in. You want to make sure that you wait until it is fully heated up so that you get a really good sear. Because the goal of doing this at the high temperature is to get a good crust around the outside. So we're going to do this for 15 to 20 minutes. 
<clears throat> we're gonna keep an eye on it and make sure that we get a good golden brown crust on it. Then we're gonna pull it out. We're gonna drop the temperature down to 350. And this, after that, that's when we're gonna put all the spices on. So if we put them in now, they'll start burning and they'll give it like a bitter taste. All right guys, this has been in the oven Sorry, now. Maddie, you need to move or you're gonna burn. This has been in the oven now for about um, like 20 minutes. Now we got it out. We're gonna drop the temperature in the oven to 350. While that gets down to temperature, we're gonna get this thing ready. So one thing I want you to notice, let me zoom in here. We've got crispy browned edges. It's exactly what we want. It looks brown, it's not gray. That's important. So now we're gonna season it. We've got fresh chopped sage, which we are gonna sprinkle all over it. And you can use the like powder, you know, the ground stuff as well. We decided to go fancy and get the fresh stuff. We do gotta add some pepper. Uh, I prefer freshly ground pepper, but I didn't have any, so we're using whatever we got. A little bit of pepper, just like that. And then we're gonna use a whole pack of bacon. I like to use whatever bacon has the thinnest slices because it's going to allow it to crisp up on the outside. If you get too thick of a bacon, then it just like ends up kind of soft and chewy. Wait, I don't know about you guys, but I think it looks pretty sweet. All right, so now that the oven is at 350, this is really important. You want to get yourself one of these uh, temperature probes, meat thermometer, and you want to insert, this one has the ability to do multiple probes. Uh, this is the first time I'm using one of these. Usually I just have one of them, like, you know, the ones with the little dial, you just stick it in, have it facing the opening so you can read it. But this one's real fancy. It's got Bluetooth, so it's going to send notifications to my phone as the temperature goes up. And you want to stick them into the thickest piece of meat. So I'm going to go in one on the front here. Because this is like the ham right here. And I'm going to go all the way in right to the bone. And then I'm going to do one on this side. There's another really thick piece here. I'm going to go again all the way. You want to make sure you're right in the center. All right, there we go. I'm against the bone. And um, so we're going to stick this in and this is going to let us know when this thing gets to the right temperature. The perfect temperature for me, and this depends on how you like it, I like it to be uh, 125 when I pull it, especially because this is a pretty big deer leg. If I pull it at 125 after I let it rest for about 20 minutes, it should be medium, medium rare in the center. That's what I like. If you want it a little bit um, more cooked, uh, you know, one, if you pull it at 130, it's gonna be medium to medium well. Um, if you let it go beyond 140, 145, you're just gonna end up with a piece of leather. So do not do that. One thing that's nice about doing two sides is last time we did this, we had it in the front and when I pulled it at 125, then we started stabbing it with the thermometer in different spots and then discovered like the back side wasn't as cooked as the front. So this way we get to monitor both sides. Just remember, you're better off pulling it early then too late, uh, because you can always stick it back in. Maddie's gonna burn. Okay, he's ready. Okay, so the front probe is at 80, the back, or sorry, the back probe is at 80, and the front probe is at 100 degrees. So we've got notifications set on the phone. We're gonna go jump in the pool and have a beer. So one of my favorite things to cook with, anything in the oven, Brussels sprouts, crispy Brussels sprouts. So you just cut them in half. If you got like big ones, like these, maybe cut them in, in quarters, just like this, and just do a crap load of those. And since Danny is apparently the master chopper, he's gonna chop them all for me, have fun. Danny did a wonderful job at cutting up all these Brussels sprouts, pouring a little bit of oil over them, we're gonna go with a little bit of salt. 
or a lot of bit of salt, you know, whatever. And uh, we're gonna do some black pepper. That's always good. Basically, whatever seasonings you like, throw them in there. And uh, we get some garlic powder. All right, so you throw all your seasonings on there, and then you're just gonna toss it. And you want to make sure that they have a fair amount of oil on them, because that's gonna allow them to get nice and crispy when we put them in the oven. All right, and then just spread them out so they're like as even as they get, and shove it aside. All right, so potatoes, we're gonna get really complicated with them. We're gonna do the exact same thing that we did with the Brussels sprouts. Throw a bunch of oil on them, just like that. Bunch of salt. Oh my God, that one got real salty. Bunch of pepper. I'm gonna toss it, bro. Chill. Okay, on. Pepper. Garlic. Oh, somebody's in trouble. Y'all heard that? What that? Okay, and then we toss it. You know what makes roast potatoes the best? Rosemary, but I don't know if I'm gonna find that in here. Let's see what we can find. Rosemary! Ha ha! Look at that. Throw a little bit of rosemary in there. Now it's a party. All right, those are ready to go in the oven. So when the deer comes out, it's gonna have to rest for about 20 to 30 minutes which is the perfect amount of time to throw these into the oven. But this last couple minutes of having it in the oven, this is when I like to put it on broil, broiling at 500 degrees, go. We're gonna do this just for two minutes. This is gonna allow that bacon to get a little crispy before we pull it out. Woo! Oh yeah, got a good crisp going on right here on the bacon. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. Wow, that looks great. We're gonna put the oven now to, uh, we're gonna put it back on bake mode. We're gonna go up to 450. It's at 400 degrees right now. And uh, we're gonna put in the Brussels sprouts and the potatoes. We're gonna leave them in there for 12 minutes. We're gonna stir them around another 12 minutes and they'll be done. And in that time, this is gonna be nice and rested and ready for dinner. So in they go. See if I can get these in side by side. Just barely. All right, I just did a little stir. Hit it for another 12 minutes. We did 12 and 12. We are gonna go to oh, yeah. boil again, 500 degrees, and I'm gonna do it for two minutes. This is gonna give everything a nice little char, little crisp, deliciousness. And then we're gonna be ready to eat the deer leg. Is at 145 on the uh, the front, 130 on the back. So we're looking at uh, like a medium rare on the back. The front's gonna be like medium well. So you get a little bit of everything for whatever people like to eat. I'm gonna untent this. These are ready to cut. Um, we're gonna start slicing this up. There we go. These roast potatoes look like roast potatoes. Everybody's seen them before, but look at these. Russell sprouts, look at how crispy and delicious those look. That's one of my favorites right there. All right, so to finish those off, it's a little secret, a little secret sauce. You can just buy this at Publix. Ken's Asian sesame ginger soy dressing and marinade. This stuff is amazing. Pour a little bit of that. Just drizzle it in there. Find something to stir it because you really don't want to touch that right now. Is it hot, hot? That stuff is good. Oh man, I can feel, I can feel how crunchy those are. That's amazing. If you're not a person that loves Brussels sprouts, you just haven't had them the right way. I promise you, you try them this way, you will start to love Brussels sprouts. Those are ready to be eaten. All right, it's the moment of truth. Oh, I am filming. I am absolutely filming. All right, guys, so when you cut into these, it's better to just cut a nice big hunk off. So I'm gonna basically just carve right through the whole front section of this. 
right along next to the bone. Let's get a look at what we got. So this is on the front side, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I just pulled a bunch of bacon off. Eat that right off the floor. Oh, that's good. So that is the front side, cut the back side here, which is a much bigger hunk of meat. Look at that, oh my God. Do you guys see that? I guess you can. That's beautiful. That is what it's supposed to look like, guys. Just lost a little bit of bacon. Can't lose that bacon. Throw that shit right back on there. That's good stuff. Beautiful. What's up, guys? Here to give you the post-dinner update. It was awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed it and that you can use it. And another fly just died. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe. We'll catch you guys next week. Peace.